Hi, everyone, and welcome to the People's Health Dispatch, where this time we're going to hear more about uh, why the malaria vaccine, which has been approved in Ghana recently, uh, is important. And to tell us more about that, here's Dr. Satyajit Rath. So hi, Satyajit, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So like to share. As I mentioned, uh, we recently heard news about Ghana approving uh, a malaria vaccine, uh, and it's uh, made big news because it's something that's been discussed for quite a while. Uh, but it has turned out to be a bit different that, um, than it was expected. It, expected. it wasn't uh, a big, uh, big, big pharma uh, vaccine that was approved in Ghana, but something else. So uh, I wanted to start with maybe talking a bit about you know why why is this news important in the first place? So um, malaria vaccines have been um, and continue to be uh, scientifically deeply difficult and problematic for a variety of reasons. Malaria is a very weird parasite. It causes chronic infections. It infects children, particularly in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, um, causes quite severe illness and deaths in children. But there are other varieties of malarial parasites elsewhere in the world that cause chronic infection with uh, a resultant different kind of illness. And in all of this, conceiving of a vaccine, creating it has always been a problem. Added to this is the problem that there aren't good animal models for testing va candidate vaccines. And uh, that makes the, uh, the development of a vaccine even more difficult. So vaccine design and testing for, for uh, various malarial illnesses has always been something of a, of a, of a difficulty. And therefore, this news um, four months ago, six months ago, of the clinical trial of this most recent vaccine, followed by its approval um, this past few weeks in Ghana, um, is such a major step. Thank you. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, we're expecting this this particular news uh, to benefit uh, groups uh, which are quite key. So if I understand correctly, uh, it's a vaccine that's going to uh, be given primarily to children. So that's, you know, one thing that's important. Uh, another thing that's important is that uh, and that's something that we rarely see, is that the vaccine is being approved uh, first in the Global South uh, and rather than in, uh, in, in, in high-income countries. So, uh, you know, how, uh, how would you comment more on that? Do you have any more thoughts on who this exact vaccine will benefit most and, uh, mm, you know, mm, what's the, the broader picture? Of, uh, of the good news it brings. It is true that this is one of the very unusual uh, instances of a vaccine first being approved for usage in the Global South. But we need to keep in mind that um, it's, it's an odd and exceptional example because it is a vaccine against falciparum malaria, which is um, common in the Global South particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, number one. Number two, it's a vaccine meant for children, for really small babies from between about six months to about two years of age. Um, and by and large, when vaccines for this kind of infectious disease have been approved for the global north, they've been approved for travelers to the global south. Um, an example is uh, the vaccine against cholera. Uh, now, this malarial vaccine, since it is a vaccine intended and for and tested in babies, is inevitably not going to be attractive to the global north, and therefore it's not surprising that it is first being approved in the global south. That said, there are two facts that I would like to point out here. The first is this is not the first malaria vaccine to be approved for usage. There is a predecessor. The predecessor, which was called RTSS, um, kind of sort of RTSS, um, it was also called Moscerix, was also approved 
again, in sub-Saharan Africa, it was a vaccine. It is a vaccine intended for felsperm malaria. It is a vaccine to be test, uh, used in children. The difference between that previous vaccine and this vaccine is, number one, the previous vaccine showed relatively lower protective ability, depending on which data set you look at, 30%, 40%, 50% protection, as compared to the present vaccine, which is actually, according to the WHO, broken the WHO's golden threshold of 75% protection. So clearly, it's an improvement. The second point for us uh, in the broader field of health activism to keep in mind is that the previous vaccine, Moscarix, was developed um, uh, by, of course, publicly funded research in collaboration with GlaxoSmithKline and funded by the Gates Foundation. The present vaccine, on the other hand, in its development has partnerships from uh, Oxford University in the United Kingdom in publicly funded research, um, the Kenya Medical Research uh, Establishment, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Um, in other words, it's a much more publicly funded research. Moscarix was also developed, I hasten to remind everybody, uh, in, in by coordination from PATH in collaboration with the Gates Foundation. Um, how this difference in the uh, developing consortia for the previous generation vaccine versus the present vaccine will play out in terms of accessibility, cost, um, how it will play out in terms of uh, volume of manufacture, particularly given that this vaccine, um, what's being called R21 matrix vaccine, uh, is uh, mm, being manufactured by the Serum Institute of India, um, here in India, how all of that is going to play out in terms of accessibility, both in terms of volume of manufacture as well as in terms of cost per dosage to um, at the level of actual implementation all remains to be seen. So uh, those are differences that we should, we should underline. Um, uh, just a last point, scientifically, this vaccine is actually simply a sort of a refined version of the previous vaccine. It's not a vaccine based on a completely different platform or a completely different target. It's the previous target, it's the previous technology tweaked and refined um, in a variety of ways to be a little more strongly uh, generating an immune response. Thank you. And I think, uh, you know, the point that you make about uh, the public funds that were uh, used to actually uh, put this vaccine out uh, it's a very important uh, it's a very important uh, point to stress all over again uh, in the light of covid-19 but also broadly so uh, my last question would be you know um, do you have any thoughts on how this research could continue uh, what would be the important steps to keep it public and to keep it accessible to all so um Clearly, all of this research is founded on decades of publicly funded research in multiple countries across the world. And therefore, for any one developer at this stage to say that they have developed something that is not obvious to the art and field and is therefore worth patenting and patent and intellectual property protecting is going to be disingenuous at best. Um, we need to point that out from the point of view of policy level health activism. At the second level, I think it's important to demand that as these vaccines get approval for field implementation, that data should be systematically collected and examined for evidence of just what level of protection is afforded, what level of uh, vaccine-related uh, um, side effects are observed, what the actual practical grassroots difficulties are in implementation, especially given the fact that multiple doses of the vaccine for babies um, are being required. So that's uh, one point about policy, one point about 
um, activism led um, monitoring of data collection and analysis for the efficacy of this particular vaccine. And at the third level, building on the point that I made that this is the same vaccine platform as the previous uh, vaccine, um, we in activist groups should also focus on the many different vaccine platforms that have been thrown up by the COVID-19 vaccine uh, efforts and those being repurposed. And a, a case in point is the fact that BioNTech, the um, German-based uh, small startup, is building a, mus a, a malaria vaccine built on the mRNA technology platform. And uh, um, it's quite plausible that if simply magnitude of immune response is going to be a major determinant of malaria vaccine effectiveness, then um, many of these different platform technologies will be useful and important to test. And we in the activist field should not lose sight of those data coming in, both in terms of the technological issues involved, as well as in terms of the intellectual property issues involved. Thank you so much.